Hello everybody, welcome back to my kind of art and I finally finished this Rihanna drawing. This one is a complete time-lapse tutorial with both text and narrated voice and if you're new to the channel consider liking the video, leaving a comment, ringing the bell to stay notified and let's get to it. Now for step number one, I used a drafting pencil to create a very, very light pencil sketch. And because I'm using a reference photo that just focuses on her eyes, nose and mouth and her eyebrows, this makes it very, very easy to just focus on those features. And this is what this drawing is all about. Make sure you're referring to your reference photo as often as possible and start with one side before moving on to the other when it comes to extreme detail so that there is less erasing in between drawing and also this helps with making sure the eyes are aligned and they're symmetrical. Using a very very thin mechanical pencil will also help fill in small micro details that otherwise a sharp regular pencil wouldn't normally work. So this one is very, very helpful in this case. Now, one of the ways to help align eyes is using a ruler and this helps you align both the bottom and top of the eyes and also even using a pencil laid across just to kind of help you make, make sure the lines are straight enough to make sure that the, everything is symmetrical. I've done that with the ruler and also not going in so dark on the right eye. I'm confident enough to start the left eye and now we can start going into more detail and eventually using darker tone pencils and start layering for a difference in contrast and light. Now for these following steps you're going to notice that I'm going to be filling in shapes using an HB pencil and also a 2B pencil. Still fairly light but making sure that things are now a lot more dense and filled in. For example, the eyebrows are going to be filled in and using the side of my pencil as well, making sure that it's easy to cover larger areas. I'm also going to go underneath where all the shadows are, for example, underneath the folds of the eyelids, the eyelashes, the irises, and even under the nose. And you're going to be noticing me rotating my drawing. This helps make sure that your hand is not cramped and not in awkward positions and it just helps you go into areas without you twisting your whole arm and body. Most importantly, in order for us to make sure we have a three-dimensional drawing, we are following the natural curves of the face and your drawing specifically. You, that's why you do need to check your reference photo. And in this case, because we are drawing a human face, Naturally, we won't be using straight lines. Instead, we're going to be using curved lines and this is going to help us in the end make sure that we have a three-dimensional look and render of a facial drawing. Now in this section, we're going to be focusing on the nose and checking our reference photo. It does look like the light source is coming from the top and the left and that is creating a cast shadow right underneath her nostrils and the tip of her nose making and this creates a shadow and a dark cast shadow. So you're going to notice that I'm going to be using a 3B pencil in this one because this is where light does not enter and this is going to create a very nice contrast between light and dark. Now as we're rendering this drawing, we're going to finally move into 4B, 5B, and even 6B dark tone pencils and this is going to help us really distinguish between different medium tones, light tones, and darker tones and have a clear separation so that we have a nice variety and contrast in this drawing. Now we can finally move on to the mouth and just like with the eyes and nose, we will be checking our reference photos and you're going to notice that there's a lot of wrinkles and this is where a lot of shadows, mid-tones also get trapped because their light is not hitting in certain areas so it looks like the light is hitting from the top left so there are going to be some specular highlights in some areas, lots of little specks of white, but then also there's very dark darks as well. 
Now for this portion of the tutorial, you're going to notice that I can finally start moving everywhere back and forth in the drawing and her entire face. And this is where we can start checking as a whole her skin tone variation and, and also to make sure that all our darks, our medium tones and lights match throughout the entire drawing. Because this is a huge step before we get into an actual blending with our stumps. Because this is where we can start building a base layer that's going to be light enough for us to start blending in and have a very, very even soft tone. So now that we have a fairly rough base of graphite laid on to this drawing, we can finally move into using these soft bristle paint brushes and these are just ordinary soft brushes that you can find anywhere that you can use for acrylic painting oil painting or watercolor and this is perfect for us to help have a very very smooth blended look and also again we're also following the natural curve of the face and this is also going to help us with that 3d look that we're going to eventually achieve Now in this step, we're going to continue adding darker, darker graphite. In this case, I added a 7B and this really intensified the irises and also the eyelashes and eyebrows and also any dark, dark contact shadows that we can see. And also, for example, the nostrils and also the middle of the lips as well. And this one's going to really, really help push that contrast that we want between light, medium and dark. Now besides art brushes, we are going to be using some art stumps and tortillons. And these sticks of rolled up paper are perfect for getting into very, very tight areas. They're perfect for getting into small areas and corners. And they are perfect for picking up graphite and moving them into other areas without actually laying more graphite onto the paper. And it creates a very soft and delicate look as well. And it's great for overall blending as well. As we're getting closer to completion, we are going to be using a kneaded eraser. And if you haven't used one before, they are very pliable. You can mold it and stretch it into various shapes and sizes. And it's perfect for lifting light to medium marks. It might not be able to completely erase dark marks, but this is perfect for getting into tight corners and removing and lifting graphite into small, small details. And it's perfect compared to normal sized erasers. Now as we're getting closer to finishing up this drawing, we're going to repeat all of the steps from the beginning of this video until we get the desired look that we're looking for. We're looking for a contrast in light to medium and dark tones, adding more detail where it's needed, going back and fine tuning areas that really do need more detail. And we're going to be looking back and forth between our reference photo until we have that 3D look. So we're going to continue to add shadows, continue to blend, and continue to round out any soft areas to create that 3D look. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you for watching. And one of my favorite things to add at the very end is adding highlights. And this, I like using a battery operated eraser. And this is perfect because it, it vibrates so fast that it removes very dark graphite pencil. And it just reveals pure white areas that otherwise would be pretty hard to do just by hand and this is very perfect for adding highlights in the irises, the eyes, in the skin to lift up pencil marks, add very very add small strokes of white highlighted hair and it just completes the look when it's next to dark areas and that creates a realistic drawing.
So I want to thank everyone for making it this far into the video and in, hopefully you enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial of this realistic drawing using a reference photo and make sure you consider subscribing, following my channel, hitting the like button, ringing the bell to stay notified for more content and see you later. Bye.